Hi, my name's Peter Coffin, and every single time somebody gets angry and then films it, they think it makes them look good, but it usually makes them look bad. You know what it's like when something happens to you in public that you don't like. Sometimes you get mad. You can't avoid it. Sometimes things just don't go your way. One time I bought some food at a food truck and it took them literally an hour to give me food. They also served a bunch of people in front of me, but I didn't yell at them. I yelled privately at no one because ultimately that rage is pretty impotent. In life, you're going to feel feelings. And when things don't go right, it's okay to be mad about it. I, like, there's not really any reason to say, like, it's wrong to be mad about stuff. It's just that when we're talking about, like, some consumer exchange, it's kind of like there are a lot of people who, you know, can't afford to fly, for instance. And I'm leading into the first thing I want to talk about today, a video posted by Colin Rugg the co-owner of this website, Trending Politics, which one look, and, and I think we, we can say this is a conservative dude. Colin says that America is fed up with the pronoun police. And uh, there's something to that, but it's also not really the problem with this clip. Let me show you what I mean. What about when adult employee misgenders I'm you so intentionally? Sorry, well, while, she's talk while he's talking, you're talking. You just misgendered me again. Yeah. Okay. Multiple times. Gotcha. Both of you have. Wasn't intentional, but if you yeah. want to take it personal, that's also well. Okay. She did do it intentionally twice. I did not do it me too. You said she, and then you said he. You're being condescending, and if you want to continue, Ooh. I have full authority escort you out the building right this moment. If you want to play that game with me, okay. Would you like to continue three days before Christmas? I really don't mind. I'm good. I'll just put this on. So we've waded our way into gender politics. Ah. Uh, the most consequential of politics that changes so much about the world for so many people. So I want to read to you what Colin Rugg contextualized this. Uh, he says, New Delta employee fed up with the pronoun police and threatens to kick man out of LaGuardia Airport who whined about being misgendered. You can tell he's not going to fall for that gender nonsense because he called the person uh who is filming a man, he said, I'm not, I'm gonna kick this man out, man. I'm so fucking conservative. Give this man a raise, he says. The person in the video, a friend of Dylan Mulvaney, shared it to TikTok in an effort to expose the employee, but it backfired miserably. Now, there are a couple of nuggets of truth in what Colin here says. Firstly, people are fed up with the pronoun police. That's not nothing. And also, this actress, who is on a Netflix series, I guess, posted this to expose the employee, and it did backfire. Uh, the gentleman on here said, it wasn't intentional, but if you want to take it personal, that's okay. That is a level-headed, correct response. He even said sorry at the very beginning of the video. If you ask me, he had every right to be irritated here. He is attempting to please multiple people. Clearly, there's another person talking to him who is not the trans woman who is filming things. It's his job, literally, to avoid conflict. Like, he is not supposed to make it worse. And he did everything that he's supposed to do. Sorry clearly wasn't enough, and the person continued to escalate it. Why? Probably because uh, it's filmed now, and that means it's content. There is an element of... Wow, I sure do hope this video goes viral. I sure do hope people are out there and agree with me. I sure do hope I get some likes, comments, and subscribes about this. And that's kind of what the problem actually is. The person who is filming doesn't really care what he says. He's content now. Oh, it's so great you stood up to that transphobic jerk. But I want to talk about another example before we... Land on the point. This is a video from Rabbi Shmuley, who was skating in Midtown Manhattan. And for some reason, some kid said free Palestine. Now, Rabbi Shmuley indicated that the kid recognized who he was. He said, your name is Rabbi Shmuley. Or maybe mispronounced his name. I, I don't really know exactly what's going on with this tweet. Rabbi Shmuley, by his own account, is called by both Washington Post and Newsweek the most famous rabbi in America, has authored 31 books, 
Uh, he's also an advisor to RFK Jr. And he called this kid a pro Hamas thug. Here's the video. Are you calling me free Palestine? Yeah. On the ice? On the ice. Really? That's yeah. the only thing you can think of? Harassing me on the ice? And Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. You came over to me Happy and said free Palestine, free Palestine on the ice. What's your name? Yeah. You don't even know my name. Why? What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid of This is going to be everywhere anyway. Good. You came over to me on the ice in Bryan and, and harassed me with free and Palestine. I said free Palestine. And I gave you a fist bump. And you don't want to. Now you're recording me. You are, you are saying free Palestine knowing that it's an anti-Semitic slur to destroy Israel. Not at all. So you don't want to destroy Israel. No, why would I want to destroy people? So what do you want? Free, free Palestine. Palestine. What about, from what? The liberation of people. You mean from Hamas, who are the no. terrorists? I want to liberate kill, people. So you're okay, I want the freedom of people. Okay I want the end to a so genocide. Okay. I want the end to a genocide. He's, oh, he's, he's harassing you. Right, 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 right. He's harassing right. you. Right. Right. You heard him at the end of the video say, this guy was harassing me. This guy who was just skating in circles that you were following intensely with a camera was harassing you. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who think, oh, it's important to take sides on these arguments. And I mean, it's fine to have an opinion on them. I think, for instance, that in the case of the first one with the trans issue, living in a free society, we should think that it's okay for people to live and present as they wish. And if somebody asks to be referred to a certain way, big deal. I don't really know how that's that big of a problem. But the Delta employee wasn't exactly just like this virulently hateful man who was attempting to stop someone from living their true life. He was a guy who was caught in the crossfire between uh, this person and another uh, customer from the looks whom we have no idea what was going on with because the inciting incident was not filmed just the outrage. As I noted with both of these videos, neither of them shows us the inciting incident. And someone might say, well, that's because it's not possible to just whip out your camera and start recording before something is going to happen. Well, where did all that footage of the first plane hitting the two towers come from? Hmm? I'm joking, that's not the issue. With Rabbi Shmuley, we didn't get to see the inciting incident either, although what it sounds like is that the kid recognized him as an Israel supporter, not just because he's a rabbi, but because he's Rabbi Shmuley, and said free Palestine. Uh, it is not anti-Semitic to not want the Palestinian people living in an open-air prison. That's actually horrible. And no, I don't want all the Jews eradicated from the earth. I have a certain degree of that blood within me, and... I don't like the idea of being eradicated a whole lot. Now, I've brought up that there are stances to take in these positions for a reason. My issue is that this is an incredibly incentivized action to take, to publicly reinforce a stance and get the kind of attention that either of these two videos are getting means that whether your stance is good or bad, people agree with you or disagree with you, there is a substantial number of people that have that opinion, and probably a substantial number that hold the opposing opinion as well. These malignant narcissists think everyone must be forced to validate their mental illness, or else it's a human rights violation. Good for this man. He is speaking for 95% of America. Yeah, see all these people? They're like, uh, yeah, that kid's right. My issue is not so much that any of the individuals involved in any of these videos are right or wrong. I actually don't care. What I'm getting at is that the prevalent media slash social media ideology has trained a bunch of people to be Karens. It doesn't matter if those Karens are right or wrong, but they have trained people to make videos of themselves enforcing their viewpoint. Because that viewpoint is commonly held by some demographic of people out there and also opposed by some demographic of people out there. And do you know what that creates? Engagement. You don't have to agree with me on trans stuff or Palestine. The point I'm trying to make to you is not about those things. The point I'm trying to make is that in order to cultivate a following, in order to get yourself out there, you got to be the protagonist sometimes. And that means there's got to be an antagonist. So you're constantly looking for antagonists. 
Note that both the transgender actress Tommy Dorfman and Rabbi Shmuley are, in fact, media personalities. And again, that doesn't make them right or wrong. It doesn't make their anger real or fake. But it does put them in a very specific context. They, whether they intend for it or not, are farming for clout. And I'm happy that both of them are so cut and dry media personalities. If they weren't, this would be a little harder to point out. But it also goes for all of the videos published that go back to that lady ranting about them not having the candles at the store. Hello, everybody. This is going to be extremely explicit. So if you don't like swearing um, or angry people from Wisconsin, then turn your mother effing camera off now. These folks are all acting as representation for various demographics. The trans woman is acting as representation for trans people, uh, standing up for herself. Of course, with people who are tired of the pronoun police and don't think that there is no validity to being tired of that. To those people, it's representation of how transgender stuff is just some form of narcissism. That's the way Colin Rugg is using it. So you have two demographics that are served by that video, both of which are going to engage in it. The same goes for Rabbi Shmuley, who is uh, claiming that wanting the Palestinian people not to live in an open-air prison is anti-Semitic. Of course, all of the ghouls that agree with him on that are going to think that Rabbi Shmuley is great and that this kid he's following around is actually harassing him. But the kid also serves a demographic. People are quote tweeting and saying, he is right, the child. I too dislike genocide. And none of it, none of it fucking matters. Not a goddamn word. None, none, none of it fucking matters. It's all just, it's, it's engagement. It's stuff that Twitter wants uh, you to do, right? Pissing off two demographics so that they fight with each other and get the thing at the center of it a bunch of attention. It locks everybody down into their viewpoints. Nobody makes any attempt to understand the issue beyond their own very specific ideas about it. And nothing changes. It doesn't really matter who is right and who is wrong in any of these videos. What matters is what these videos are. They are an image commodity. We've talked about that a little bit recently. Uh, they are aesthetically reductions of all of the people involved, whether it be the trans actress, whether it be Rabbi Shmuley, whether it be the guy who said Free Palestine, or the Delta employee. None of those people exist as people. Not in this interaction, anyway. I mean, often their regular lives, sure, they exist as people. But we are not getting that. We're getting one very specific thing from all of these people. And we're meant to have an opinion on and to engage with that highly specific image. While it's fine to express yourself, and I have, I, I've noted my opinions on all of these issues throughout this video. Uh, it's important to realize it doesn't really do anything. You're kind of just playing into somebody making money. And that's not even taking us back to uh, the trans actress or Rabbi Shmuley here. I ain't talking about them. They got their own feelings and I can't make them feel something different. So why would I go after them? I kind of agree with one of them, although I don't agree with how they're going about things. And I don't agree with the other one. Big deal. I'm talking about capital. The platform holders, the owners of these interactions, the controllers, the ones that really, truly benefit from these things. They don't care what you think. They don't care who you support. They just care that you do with one of them. That's why I continually tell people that individual consumer choices don't matter because it's all presented to us as consumer choice. The way you want to live, whether it be trad or progressive in some way, it's presented to you in a market. And to be fair, I think that those choices should be there, just not as lifestyle commodities. But that's what they are. And that's what I'm getting at. They don't care which one you choose. You are supposed to be a Karen warrior for your lifestyle, which sucks a lot. Wow. 
like, comment, and subscribe, because, uh, yeah, this is a video, too.